You are listening to ChartingWealth.com for Tuesday, the 24th of May, 2016. We always start with IYY, which is the iShares Dow Jones U.S. Total Market Index Fund. and It's, extra- it's an exchange-traded fund that tracks the whole market. What do we see going on? We see the market continuing to go down. Market was down overall today, 0.18%. Now, we see a bit of a green spinning top, even though the market was down. We're using our Hikin Ashi type candlesticks. If you don't know what that is, you need to go to our website, chartingwealth.com, and check out the new video teaching we did over the last week. I'm quite proud of it. It's an extremely good one. It explains to you exactly that type of candlestick. What we see is we see the market is still below our two-day trend line. We have the derivative oscillator losing a little bit of its speed on the two-day chart. And the MACD and the signal line are maintaining about the same separation they have for the last uh, several candles going on, three candles now. So again, market down 0.18%. If we look during the day at the intraday movement on our four-hour chart, you can see the market crossed over going up on the four day chart as far as the Mac sorry four hour chart as far as the MACD went back on the morning of the 23rd that's of course Monday went up in the morning then down in the afternoon still down below the two day trend line closed with some indecision toward the end of the day as it barreled on down so again derivative oscillators in the positive MACD crossed over in the morning of the 23rd Monday and But still, just because the four-hour chart crosses over doesn't mean that our two-day chart is out of play. We're still below the two-day trend line. We still call the overall mood of the market down on the total market. Now let's go back to our two-day chart. And we're going to go to the S&P 500. It was down 0.17% for the day, still below the two-day trend line. And we have continued down movement in the market. The derivative oscillator lost a little bit of its downward energy. And the MACD and the signal line are still about the same separation they were starting back on the 18th or so. So let's look at the intraday trend that we see on the four-hour chart. Down movement in the morning and in the afternoon. Although the derivative oscillator popped over. And we saw the MACD pop over in the morning on the four hour chart. So we'll continue to watch things. Interesting how much upward momentum we saw on that four hour chart as far as the derivative oscillator went. So we'll continue to watch that. Lots of indecisions the way the day ended on the short chart. Now lastly we will go back to our two day chart and we'll take a look at the cues. It was down 0.16% for the day. Q's is still in a negative position, although losing that negative downward momentum pretty significantly. Uh, Haven't had a crossover yet, but the signal line is moving toward the MACD. Like we said, the derivative oscillator has lost a lot of energy. We have a green up candle on the two-day chart. First green up candle we've seen since the 10th. And again, what's the Q's been doing? Mostly sliding sideways, although again, down for the day, 0.16%. Remember, a Hikin Ashi average pace candle shows you the momentum and the pace of what's going on with the price. It's calculated different than the high open, low close of a standard candle. So again, giving you some forewarning potentially on the cues there with that green up candle with an up wick, no down wick on that green candle at all. Now let's look at what went on intraday. Intraday, where we saw the momentum start moving up on Friday the 20th, two big up candles, and then followed by an up green candle in the morning and a spinning top in decision, downward momentum in the afternoon. Like we said, the Q's was down the most of the three indexes. It was down 0.16% for the day, but we are concerned about that upward momentum that we see, not as much on the short chart as to what we saw 
on the two-day chart. But again, we're still calling it in a down move. It's not crossed over yet, and derivative oscillator is still negative. But if you've made money on the Qs, which would have been hard to do over the last few days, seeing as how it's been sliding sideways since the 10th, uh, and that's going on, what, 14 days now, uh, it still does appear to be poised to potentially reversing that trend, but it has not happened yet, so we don't call it. The charts tell us what to do. Now, lastly, we're going to go to gold and see if gold is still confusing. Well, it crossed over going down on the 18th. Been three good, strong down candles so far in gold. Derivative oscillator is heated up in the negative, and the MACD has moved away from the signal line significantly. So nice downtrend we're seeing in gold. If we look at our four-hour chart, what do we see? We see that the four-hour chart crossed over going down about the same time gold did back on the 18th. It was followed a day later by the derivative oscillator flipping over. We always like to see both of those events occur at the same time. It makes you feel better about that move. Gold then sort of slid sideways up until Monday morning where it did drop over some significantly and then some up movement in the afternoon. Gold was down for the day 0.30%. We will not make any calls on getting into any down move on gold until, until we see a rollback going up on the short four-hour chart, and that has not happened yet. That is where we are as we enter into the week. All of our index is still down hard. Watch the cues on a potential up move. All of our indexes were down for the day, 0.18 for the total market, 0.17 for the S&P 500, and 0.16 for the cues, which is the NASDAQ 100, and gold was down the most at 0.30. Hope that you're getting into the mood for a great week this week. We always love to hear from you. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, you name it. We try to be there for you. We love to hear from you. If you're not already signed up for our newsletter, do so at Charting Wealth. What will you get for that? Our free How to Read a Stock Chart video, a link to that, plus a link to our layout, the layout that we use at Free Stock Chart, that we use from freestockcharts.com at chartingwealth.com. Also, if you appreciate what we do, we would love it if you would go to iTunes, subscribe to the podcast, give us a five-star rating no matter what you do, say something nice about us. It sure helps us in the metrics. Thank you so much. God bless from chartingwealth.com.